Yeah, I, I was sitting over there, and I noticed he made that crack about my hair. Bob Siler laughed louder than anybody in the room. Look, look at the hair on his head. He looks just like Tip O'Neill. You know? And he got up here, got to talking, and I thought it was Tip O'Neill, you know. But seriously, what he doesn't, you know, he did not hurt my feelings, really. I figured this out years ago. God gave all of us men an equal amount of male hormones. Siler wants to use his to grow hair. That is fine with me. <laughs> Nikki. That's a good Italian name for that part. Short for Nicole, you know. <laughs> Did you know, Nikki, that on the West Coast there's a Catholic church with a drive through confessional booth? Seriously, I mean, that'd save you some time, Nikki. Uh, <laughs> Look, see, it looks just like McDonald's got, them in, got a lane over here. And they go through it. Actually, it's got two lanes. Got an express lane over here. <laughs> for, for people with seven sins or less. <laughs> Nikki, that one wouldn't help you much at all. That, that, oh. But seriously, they got a good deal. See, out there, the Catholics, Nick, they go through this first lane. They go up to this window and tell it all to the priest. See, confess. Go to the next window, get them a sausage biscuit they threw for the day. <laughs> And they advertise it. They're proud of the drive through confessional booth. Got them a big neon sign up there that blinks. It says, toot and tell or go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Not my church. That's Nikki's church. <laughs> but you know, I spent most of my adult life selling airplanes for a living. I had a chance to combine that with the church work one time. I gave my preacher a ride from Huntsville down to Montgomery in one of those little airplanes like we sold. <laughs> Wouldn't y'all think that a preacher would be totally calm in an airplane with all that faith they all the time bragging about? <laughs> I would have. My preacher got that airplane and shut both eyes and grabbed the armrest and just sat there and quivered like this. After a while, he opened one eye and looked out the window. He said, my Lord, from up here the people look like ants. I said, preacher, those are ants. We ain't took off yet. <laughs> Didn't help. He sat like this all the way to Montgomery and we got out of the airplane. I said, I'm going to preach at him, and I did. I said, Preacher, it does seem to me that you were a tad nervous on that flight. He said, No, I wasn't. I was scared slap to death. I had him then. I pulled me a lesson right out of the Bible. I said, Preacher, I don't know why you'd be fearful on that trip when you know full well that the good book says, I am with you always. He said, No, it does not. It says, Lo, I am with you always. <laughs> started this. What I started doing is hiking on these little mountain trails we got on the Tennessee Alabama border, you know. And I started this in August. Hot, boy, it was a hot day. And I, I did too much. Two hours uphill, huffing and puffing, sweat just pouring off of me. And I came around this corner. And folks, right there was, was maybe the best swimming hole God ever created. Oh, it looks so cool, I want to go swimming so bad, but I had a sign that said, Private Property, No Swimming. I hadn't seen anybody in two hours. I didn't have a bathing suit, so I went skinny dipping. And it was cool. In fact, in about ten minutes, it got slapped cold. And just as I was about to rise up out of this water, in all my majestic glory, I looked up and there, sitting on my clothes, was this hillbilly woman with a rifle. Mean-looking woman. Seriously, it looked like perhaps she was attending Georgia Tech on a mud wrestling scholarship. Huh? <laughs> I'm not going to say this was an ugly woman, but folks, you put her in a bathing suit on the beach, the tide would never come back in. It'd just, <laughs> just stay out. Man, I'm in a mess. I'm about to freeze to death. I'm in the water. She's sitting on my clothes. She's toting a rifle. But, you know, I believe in using what you have to the best of your ability. And about that time, I kicked something out of that water. Now, I couldn't see it, but I could feel it. It was a great big round dish pan, like your grandmama used to put on the kitchen counter. It's all I had. I located that dish pan strategically in front of me. I got as skinny as I could get. I came walking out of that water, and I walked up to that bank, and I walked up to that woman, and I said, You know what I think? She said, Well... I reckon you think there's a bottom in that dish pan. <laughs> so I, 
I was trying to do the best I could with what I had to work with, but she was looking at things from a different angle, see it? <laughs> No. Oh, thank you all for inviting me, and thank you for, you know, I've gotten such good treatment from Mike Delvesis and Anita Stewart, and it's just been a real, <laughs> Stevens, Stevens, excuse me. Well, that's pretty good for all the names I had written down, not to look at them. <laughs> Where is she? There she is, I pointed the wrong woman on top of all of that. I believe I better quit while I'm ahead. But thank you for inviting me, and thank you for being such a really wonderful group. Thank you.